look and see where people are. Let's go back to this paradigm here, ease of use and power. How many here went to business school? Good. <laughs> if you did, we'll go back to business school 1A, power versus ease of use. Where would you put IBM computers running MS-DOS on here? Remember who's doing it now. <laughs> not so powerful, not so easy to use. I put them there. <laughs> now, they're trying to get better. They're trying with Presentation Manager and Windows to move over there, and they're making some, some distance. They're also trying to put faster processors in the box, but they're running up against a problem. It's not the speed of the processor. It's the software architecture that's giving them their ceiling that they're bumping up against. Faster processors are not enough of the solution. What about the Macintosh? Where would you put the Macintosh? It's about as powerful, but it's easier to use. So let's put it there. And again, they're trying to make it faster with a processor, but they're bumping up against the software ceiling of no multitasking, somewhat amoebic, uh, anemic uh, networking. Where would you put the workstations? They're much more powerful, but they're even harder to use than the IBM PC, so we put them there. And they're trying to make them easier to use, but the people that are writing the software that's easy to use are Unix people, and you know what they're used to. So this stuff looks very easy to use to them, but none of us could ever understand it. So where would you put next? <laughs> right here. For two reasons. One, we think we're about three years ahead of anyone else in understanding some things necessary to do that. And two, it's the only place left. <laughs> there's, there's very good companies doing the other three. So if we don't survive there, we don't have a reason for being here. We, we, we understand that. So this is how we see the market, pretty much, from our simple point of view. Now the last thing I want to do is probably the most important. There have been two revolutions in the desktop computer industry, and there is about to be a third. We think we understand this revolution. I want to tell you about it today, and then I'm just going to walk right over there and show you. What was the first revolution of the industry? Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet circa really happened in 1976. I remember when Dan Feilstra, who started Visic Visicorp, walked in and pulled this disk out of his pocket about six months before it became Visicalc. He said, I have this visual calculator and I don't know what to do with it. Became the first spreadsheet. That's what fueled the Apple II and then later Lotus on the IBM platform. And that's what really fueled the IBM platform. The spreadsheet was the first revolution. What was the second revolution? Come on. Right. Desktop publishing. Circa 1985, the Macintosh. And that's what fueled the Macintosh. And again, I remember the early days of desktop publishing and how rapidly that started to spread. There is a third revolution starting. We get asked about it a lot. What is the next revolution? We started to understand it about a year ago, and we really understand it pretty well now. Now, let's examine what the nature of that is. We know it has something to do with networking. We've been hearing about networking for years now. Each year is the year of the network, and nothing's different. <laughs> but we know there's something big coming. We know it has something to do with connectivity. We know it has something to do with email. We know it has something to do with file servers and groupware and getting the paper off our desks. Let me stop for a minute. We started to see this at Next when we put a Next computer on everyone's desk about 18 months ago and connected them together with a very fast high-speed network that's built into the computer and also with our very, very new multimedia mail system. And what we discovered was that within a few months, our meetings were being cut in half in number. But something far more happened. We started to manage the company different. And we finally understood what it was. Business is so competitive now that the business environment is changing constantly. We're having new sales opportunities. We're having new problems. We're having new projects. 
and we found out that a typical management organization cannot change very fast. You can't have people working for a new boss every week to configure a group together for a changing business environment. It doesn't work. We're also organized geographically. We might have a project in one part of the United States. We can't be moving people around with their families every month. That changes even more slowly than the management organization. So how do we reconfigure the company and change the way people work to meet the constantly changing business opportunities? We do it electronically. And so we have a system now where if we're going to start a project and we want to put 20 people together on that project, we make a mailbox. We put their 20 names on it. And anyone mailing to that mailbox reaches all 20 of them. Not with just text, but with full multimedia, as we'll see in a second. And they'll reply to that mail message, and all of their colleagues on that team will get the answers. Maybe 30, 40 messages a day. I, as a manager, can put my name on that mailbox because this project is so important and see all of the thoughts, the disagreements, the conclusions fly by my mail system. I can do nothing but watch. I can do some background coaching, or I can get right on there and kibitz. And I have never seen a more powerful tool for changing the way a company works and making it more productive than this. Now, we need a phrase to call this. Sometimes names are very important. And we went back and we looked at desktop publishing. Why didn't we call it word processing? Because all these people using these ridiculous Wang word processors would have thought they had it. <laughs> and they didn't have it. It wasn't just word processing. It was a whole new capability. So we had to invent a phrase, desktop publishing, to connote it. It was a bucket that you could put these new things into. In the same way, if that, but as we go into the 90s, we're going to hook these things together, and we're going to use them in the same way we revolutionized financial modeling with spreadsheets and publishing with desktop publishing. We're going to revolutionize human-to-human -human communication and group work. And we're going to call it not personal computing, but interpersonal computing. Is it funny? <laughs> I think it's profound, actually. And I think we're going to be hearing a lot more about it as the, as the years roll by. And we think that this is going to be the next revolution. And we think we're about three years ahead in pioneering this, which is good. And hopefully we can make some contributions here. So with that, I would like to show you what I mean. Uh, first thing to notice is the next computer is fully multitasking. So rather than quitting something, I can hide it. And it will hide it over here behind these icons.